So this plant, as you can see here, is a member of the carrot family. What we're looking at right now is cow parsley, also often referred to as wild chervil. So here's what makes cow parsley cow parsley. The stem on this plant is pretty strongly ridged. Right here, you can see the strong ridging on here. It's quite a uh, rough textured ridged plant like you'd see in a stalk of celery. But this plant is completely round and it's hairy. Not quite as long a hair as you see in a wild carrot, but it has a fuzzy texture and you can see those fine short little hairs with your eye. You can see white streaking up the stem where those hairs are present. And there's no purple, hardly at all on this plant. Just the slightest of color change where the stems split off. These leaves are alternately arranged on the plant on the main stem. And they divide twice into their little leaflets here. The little leaflets are opposite of each other on the uh, leaf here. So right here, here's a leaf that I've pulled off of this plant. The top of it has a divot in it. You can see right there on top of the leaf, it's got a trough type, almost like a celery. The hair persists throughout the entire stem on this leaf. From a distance, and it's, it's an extremely dark green, much darker green than you'd see in a wild carrot. The leaves are far broader, broader and uh, spearheaded shaped. They're almost a spitting image of poison hemlock. Again though, this plant is hairy, whereas poison hemlock is totally hairless. The umbels again are more your look-alike to uh, water hemlock and poison hemlock. Less of a solid umbel like you'd see in a wild carrot. You have little evenly spaced out mini umbels. The largest of the umbels on these plants are rarely bigger than four inches across. They're pretty small. The overall height of this plant rarely exceeds three and a half, four feet. It's never over four feet, so it's a far shorter plant than poison hemlock. It's around the same height as you'd see in a wild carrot. So some other features worth noting on the uh, cow parsley here is wherever there's a division in the stems, where the flowers are, there's an arrangement of leaves coming out of that uh, stem there. So wherever this plant seems to divide, there's uh, smaller leaves right here where the plant divides, especially up near the flower heads. So this flower umble here, unlike a wild carrot on the cow parsley here, there are no lances or feathery type structures coming off of the bottom of that umbel where it meets the stem. It's bare. And right on these little mini umbels here, there's the smallest little bracts. It's hard to see on this uh, GoPro here, but you can uh, see the green coming off the base of those little mini umbels. Each one of those has ones, but not on the main one where it meets the stem. That's pretty important. So cow parsley is the earliest flowering plant in the carrot family. This plant can flower as early as mid-May, very, very early. It'll often shed its flowers and produce seeds before many of the other members even produce their flowers. So this flower is not in the ballpark of poison hemlock in terms of its flowering season. So here's a taproot of this plant. It is a very, very large taproot. It's not small by any means. There are very few fibrous hairs coming off of it. Fibrous hairs coming off of any taproot in the carrot family. The more fibrous, there's a chance that there's even more uh, nitrogen in the soil. Nitrogen encourages those fibrous roots to grow. Just a little FYI. At the base of these, I should point out, there's some uh, purple streaking. However, this streaking is a very consistent, smooth streaking that fades up the stem. Poison hemlock is spattered. Not only that, it's spattered throughout the entire plant all the way up to the near the flower umbels. This is and it's consistent. That's uh, very important to remember, the consistency of this uh, purple. And the hairs and the strong ridging. It's very textured. The taproot of this plant has a very strong carroty odor. 
It's quite a strong odor. It's pretty rank in comparison. It's not quite as pungent as uh, what you'd see in a parsnip. It's more of a carrot smell, but it's pretty strong. This plant is notably a biennial, which means it grows small in its first year, like most of the carrot family, spreads up and produces flowers in its second year. Right here is a small one in its first year. It's uh, very much like a parsley. These early young leaves can be used as an edible uh, plant, like any uh, thing you'd use in the carrot family. However, it is my opinion and personal belief that this plant should be avoided at all costs. This plant bears such a close resemblance to poison hemlock that it's just not worth it. There are far better options out there for foragers. So heed my warning, if you ever decide to use this plant, if there's any degree of mistake in its identification, you will pay the price. For, so for that reason, I strongly advise against using this plant for eating purposes. Four and maybe even three years ago, there is no sign of this plant in my area. As you can see, it has completely taken over this ditch. And in some more of the southern areas toward the St. Lawrence River, it's just rampant. This plant is so extremely invasive, not only because of its thousands of seeds that it can use to reproduce, this plant has an unusual ability to spread through its root also. So it can split off and produce new tap roots and shoot off new plants, which is extremely unusual in this family. So it's become aggressively invasive. These plants are growing in conjunction with this wild valerian here. As you can see, the valerian is nearly the same height as most of them, but it's still got a ways to go before it produces its showy white solid umbel flowers. There's literally nowhere that this plant can't grow. It, per it uh, prefers drier open sites that you'd find wild carrots in. It's not usually found in standing water as you can see this ditch, which is pretty dry right now, but it's literally bare of these plants. They grow along the hillside in the disturbed sites where it's drier and more sandy. Many foragers, including myself, will state that the carrot family is not a family uh, meant for amateur foragers. This is really is a seasoned foragers family, as the carrot family is home to some of the most lethal plants found in the plant kingdom. It takes a good bit of skill and practice to distinguish them all, as there are many varieties. Heracleum maximum. This plant, uh, as you probably guessed, is a member of the carrot family. This plant right here can cause photosensitive uh, dermatitis in sensitive individuals, although to a much, much lesser degree as its bigger brother, giant hogweed. Giant hogweed is an extremely invasive species from China. It's invaded North America and spread all across the continent. In my area, it's pretty much been wiped out. That's why I haven't been able to film a specimen. This species here, though, is native to North America and grows uh, within reason. This plant stays low to the ground in its first year and in its preceding years until the end of its life cycle, which is a couple of years, up to seven years in some cases, it uh, produces flowers and spreads through seeds. Its hollow stems are often boiled or steamed and used as a wild edible. It has a very disagreeable odor uh, or taste raw though. Aside from its hollow stems as an edible plant, uh, the only other edible part on this plant are its seeds. The seeds are often ground up and used as a spice. Besides those two things, there uh, really isn't much other use for this plant as a wild edible. It has no medicinal value as far as I'm concerned. This one plant right here has started to flower. These are very large flower umbels. They'll uh, become up to a foot in diameter or more in some cases. It's a rather uh, large beefy plant compared to many of its uh, relatives in the carrot family. The leaves are alternate among the uh, stem. The leaves crowd out the stem because they're so large. But you can see uh, an alternate leaf arrangement here. There's one and there's another and another. These leaves can be absolutely huge. They can get over 15 inches across. They're quite big. So wherever a stem uh, divides off of the main stem, there's a sheath that encompasses the uh, corresponding leaf 
and uh, stem. So wherever there's a division here, you can see a sheath. The sheath is very, very large on these plants, and it's a good uh, identifying characteristics. It's much larger than other members of the carrot family. You can even see sheaths covering some of the uh, immature flower heads here. These flower heads consist of many, uh, many umbels. On the other side of the flower head, you see no bracts or anything hanging off of that junction right there. And then they uh, will sprout up to make many, many more uh, mini umbels. There's a top view of these white flowers. They're five petaled white flowers, just like pretty much every other member of the carrot family. They all have uh, five petals, five stamens, at least all the ones I'm aware of. Also like giant hogweed, but to a much, much lesser extent, there is some purple splotching on the stem, especially near the base of the plant. Giant hogweed is very, very strongly spattered in uh, purple to red splotches. The stem on this plant is uh, pretty hairy. The hair on these uh, plants, though, are uh, rather coarse, like you see in a stinging nettle. So right here, I've pulled this plant off of its main taproot. Um, the taproot is stuck in the ground pretty hard. I was unable to pull it out, but there's no difference between the look of it and any wild carrot. It's pretty large. Tap roots can get 10 inches long. They're uh, pretty big tap roots. Um, it has the faintest odor of carrot. It's not a very strong carrot odor, but it's detectable. You can see almost like ribbon candy, the purple streaking going up the stem. Here's a view of the leaf of this plant. This leaf here is 10 inches, to 10 to 12 inches wide. And it's, it's a big leaf cluster to say the least. Giant hogweed, for the record, is far more serrated and lobed, and the leaves on giant hogweed are uh, huge by comparison to this plant. Everything about that plant is far more massive. The color of the top of this plant is a much darker green than the underside of it, which is more white than green. The stem is pretty strongly ribbed. Not to the extent in cow parsley, but the ridges are there. The broken stems of these plants uh, emit a pretty disagreeable odor. They have uh, an indescribable odor, but it's not a very uh, pleasant smelling plant. This plant's pretty widespread in some areas, although pretty uncommon in my area. It's not terribly invasive compared to a lot of other members of the carrot family, like the uh, cow parsley I showed you earlier. It's pretty tame by comparison to some of those.